Are the modern Egyptians the direct descendants of the ancient ones? In the last decade, the question of ancient Egyptians' ancestry has gained significant attention, sparking debates and capturing headlines. Advancements in genetic technology have been crucial in unraveling this mystery and adding a new perspective to our knowledge of this ancient civilization. Within this dynamic landscape, four groundbreaking studies have emerged, reshaping our perception of the origins of the ancient Egyptians. 2012 DNA Tribes In January 2012, DNA tribes conducted the first significant study that reverberated across the globe. Their meticulous analysis of mummies from the 18th dynasty unveiled a startling connection to Central and West Africans. The revelation was further substantiated when in 2020, their Y chromosome was examined, revealing an affiliation with the R1B haplogroup, which has its roots in West Asia and is today the most common in Western Europe. But contrary to what has been spread, both results are not incompatible since our 1B is still present in Africa, notably among Central Africans in Chad and Cameroon. It has been present in Africa since prehistoric times, as attested by the following study, and was there even prior to its spread to Western Europe, where it is today the most common. 2012 Supreme Council of Antiquities of Egypt in a momentous turn of events, the Supreme Council of Antiquities of Egypt, under the leadership of Zahi Hawass himself, launched the second influential study in December 2012. They focused on the mummy of Ramses III, known as the last great pharaoh. The findings astounded the world, as it was revealed that Ramses III and his son Pentor belonged to the E1B1A haplogroup, which is the most prevalent genetic marker among populations in Sub-Saharan Africa. 2017 Abu Sir El Melek. The third one occurred in 2017 when a highly publicized study emerged as a landmark in the field of ancient Egyptian research. The study involved the extraction of DNA from 150 mummies found in the city of Abu Sir El Melek, located in Middle Egypt. These mummies span from the late New Kingdom to the Greco Roman period, providing a comprehensive timeline of ancient Egyptian history. But contrary to the previous mummies, these were not royal mummies, but some random inhabitants of the area of unknown origin. Through extensive analyses, scientists revealed intriguing findings that garnered significant attention. The DNA extracted from the mummies displayed stronger genetic affinities with populations from the Near East and Europe compared to modern Egyptians. This discovery was attributed to an 8% increase in the African genetic component. Since its publication, this study has been widely referenced by mainstream media and the majority of experts as a definitive answer to the ethnicity of the ancient Egyptians. 2010 Adama Interestingly, it is essential to note a less publicized yet equally or probably more significant fourth study. Conducted in 2010, this study focused on the necropolis of Adama. Astonishingly, despite being published seven years prior to the Abu Sur study, it received minimal attention in the media. However, experts universally acknowledge it as the most significant site ever discovered in Egypt. The researchers found that the populations of Adama belonged to the L0F haplogroup, which is the most prevalent among the Khoisan populations residing in Sub-Saharan Africa. Once again, this discovery strengthens the connection between the indigenous people of ancient Egypt, known as Kemet, and their African heritage. Undoubtedly, it stands as one of the most remarkable findings regarding the ancient civilization of Kemet. Why is it so special? Firstly, the sample of Adama represents a population of almost a thousand individuals discovered in untouched tombs and who lived in Kemet from the pre-dynastic to the dynastic period. In other words, these individuals are by definition indigenous Egyptians because they lived there from before the Pharaonic period to the Third Dynasty. They were founding fathers of that civilization. A hieroglyphic of Pharaoh Ka was even discovered in the area, bringing even more legitimacy to that community. In contrast, the oldest mummies of Abu Sur date from the late New Kingdom, which is centuries after the country was invaded and occupied by foreigners coming from the Middle East. And at that time, Kemet became an empire with numerous foreigners settling in the country. And Abu Sur is located right in that area that was under the influence of these foreign groups. This makes it less interesting if we want an uncontaminated sample. Secondly, 
contrary to the analysis of Abu Sur, the location of Adama is exceptional in the context of ancient Egypt. It is located at the heartland of the pharaohs. In Upper Egypt, and between the most important cities of that civilization like Thebes or Nekin. So, basically it is strategically positioned to give us an answer about the identity of the indigenous Egyptians. Contrary to the Max Planck Institute specialists who analyzed the mummies of Abu Sir El Melek, Eric Krubazi, the man in charge of Adama took into account historical events, migrations, invasions, or diseases. He provided a very comprehensive analysis that makes complete sense in my humble opinion. He deserves more recognition for his work. And here is what he concluded. The contemporary populations of the valley can no longer be considered as easily as one might have thought in the past as the direct descendants of the dynastic populations. Indeed, the historical period seems to have led to the arrival of subjects as well as to very distinct matrimonial choices between religious communities. As for the populations of the past, important evolutions seem to have taken place at the end of the Neolithic, between the pre-dynastic and the dynastic periods and during the Roman and Greek eras. If for the latter two, the melting pot of cities such as Alexandria seems easy to evoke, for the others the reasons remain unknown even if phenomena such as tuberculosis and epidemic phase demonstrated in Adama must have been important selection and evolution factors. In other words, modern Egyptians can't be considered direct descendants of the ancient populations because there have been too many events that impacted the population in the area in ways that completely changed lineages, creating significant differences between Adama and today. And finally, in 2020, the question of the link between ancient and modern Egyptians has been asked to the Egyptologist Dr. Juan Carlos Moreno Garcia on one of my favorite YouTube channels about the ancient world, Sama, and here was his answer. And now, Methodius asked a very controversial question, and that is, are modern Egyptians mostly the same as the ancient Egyptians? And if not, why? Well, I don't, I don't think so, because uh, there has been a lot of, uh, as I said, Egypt is a really crossroads of populations. You, you can imagine, for instance, in the Greco-Roman period, there were uh, tens of thousands of uh, Greeks that were settled in, in Egypt for two or three generations, perhaps they preserve uh, their Greek uh, identity, but we know that they became uh, bilingual, uh, they married Egyptian women and so on. So there was a contribution from people from Greece, from Rome and so on. We also know that at the end, for instance, of the Roman Empire, there was a migration of peoples from uh, Algeria to the Nile Valley and they settled there and so on. There was, uh, of course, uh, the, arrival, the arrival of people from Arabia when the, the Arabs conquered uh, Egypt in the 622, perhaps something like, like that. So, and there was a massive arrival of uh, Arabic people. Once again, uh, Egypt was also a crossroads, so the, um, the, the Red Sea harbors were used by the people from all North Africa to do the, the, the annual uh, peregrination to, La Me uh, to Mecca. So the, as I, we know that in many cases uh, they settled in Egypt. Uh, Cairo became one of the most famous and biggest universities in the Middle Ages. So it attracted a lot of people from the Arab world and so on. So I think that the contribution of, of, of uh, Ottoman peoples and so, so on was very important. So I think uh, there is uh, even all these populations were assimilated by Egyptians, but I think that in some way they, they marked uh, a lot of aspects of, uh, of uh, culture for, I don't know, perhaps the analysis of, uh, again of the DNA <laughs> may uh, uh, contribute a lot about uh, these kind of things, but we have texts that uh, I speak about the, the arrival of uh, tens of thousands of people that, well, it's uh, forcibly they, they have left uh, their mark in uh, in this space, the, in this kind of uh, melting pot that, that, that it was uh, Egypt. As it happens uh, always with this kind of crossroads where people from different origins uh, meet, uh, at the end they develop a, a single culture, but they come from very, very different uh, uh, geographical uh, origins. 
So, we see that all very serious specialists who combine numerous disciplines like history with invasions or migrations and anthropology to back up the genetic work agree that there are too many and significant differences between ancient and modern Egyptians to even dare claiming that the population remained unchanged or a direct continuity between ancient and modern populations as it is being pushed these days. It simply does not make any sense. I personally believe that in Egypt, there must be a few communities here and there who can have a direct link to ancient populations, but it is definitely a small minority. And when we take into account migrations, massacres, exoduses, and then check what most of the genetic studies reveal, those claims simply collapse. But what do you think? Do you think that modern Egyptians are direct descendants of the ancient ones? Do you agree with these scholars? Or do you have your own theory? Let me know in the comments below. I will make another video to go in depth and further develop my argument, so don't forget to like, subscribe, and share the truth. Thanks for watching Mr. Imhotep's channel and see you in the next video.